Good morning. And welcome to worship on this nice summer day. Just what we were praying for, right? Uh, I have some announcements to call your attention to. There are a lot of things happening in the month of August. And the bulletin supports all of these with more information. But please keep in mind that August 6th is National Night Out. That's here at Bethel. And it begins with a meal and followed with entertainment. What a great event for you to invite your neighbors and friends to come to with you. And then on August 8th, uh, there is Worship on the Farm of Bev and Jim Gorder. That begins with a social time and then a potluck at 5.30 and at 6.30, the staff of Good Earth Village will be um, uh, leading the worship. So look forward to that as well. And day camp, you might have noticed that in the bulletin, and they were asking for help with that. In fact, check out all of the count me ins because there are many ways that you can serve here at Bethel. And then we have Sherry Engel here to tell us about the Rochester mission trip, and that is August 13th and 14th, I believe. Good morning. One of the great things about Bethel is a variety of mission, pro mission trips and service projects you can participate in. This summer, I've had the great opportunity to participate in two mission trips. For the first trip, I traveled to Puerto Rico with my family and 16 others. It was an amazing trip full of hard work and wonderful fellowship. The members of that trip truly appreciated all your support. Today, I'm here to invite all of you to join me on the second mission trip of my summer. It is the Rochester mission trip that starts right here at Bethel. This is a great opportunity for anyone who isn't able to travel or for those who want to serve and make a difference right here in Rochester. There are eight different service sessions between 9 a.m. and 8 p.m. on August 13th and 14th. You can join others as group travel, groups travel to places such as Channel One Food Pantry, Samaritan Bethany, ReStore, or even Color Me Mine. You might stay right here at Bethel cooking for residents at the Gift of Life Transplant House or making care packages for residents at Ronald McDonald and Dorothy Day. There is an insert in your bulletin showing you all the wonderful opportunities we have. If you're not available on August 13th and 14th, there are other ways to participate. You can purchase items listed on the Christmas and July trees in the narthex. These items will help create the care packages we give to others. Salads and desserts are needed for lunch and dinner for the workers. There is a sign up on the count me ins for sa salads and desserts. We also ask for your prayers for those who are working and for those we go out to serve. I look forward to hopefully seeing you and meeting many of you at the Rochester mission trip. Thank you. Well, thank you, Sherry. And there are ways for all of us to be involved. Appreciate that. If you're a visitor who's worshiping with us this morning, we want to extend a special welcome to you and tell you how good it is for you to be here with us this morning. And uh, we are going to stand and greet one another. If you're a visitor, you might tell the people around you, please stand and greet one another. You are way up here. Good morning. That was, that was a... All are. It's what? Mary's with my mom. Mary, so you take your ships. We continue with our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God 
who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Amen. Seeking reconciliation with God and neighbor, let us remember the gift of baptism and confess our sin. God of mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, against one another, and against the earth entrusted to our care. We are worried and distracted by many things, and we fail to love you above all else. We store up treasures for ourselves and turn away from our neighbors in need. Forgive us that we may live in the freedom of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When we were laid low by sin and guilt, God made us alive together with Christ. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Rejoice in the good news. Amen. You may be seated as we are called to worship. as you are able and sing.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. You are speaking even when we're not listening. Incline your ears to hear what you are telling us in this day and this world for the life of your people. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated.
A reading from Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being, and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Children are invited forward for the children's word. fun to be able to do different things outside and enjoy some nice weather to swim or to be in the park or to have time to play and maybe even a little bit of a break from school or preschool it's nice to be in this summer season well I want to make a sound in just a few moments and I want you to tell me what that sound means all right are you ready I saw you almost want to clap as well. What does that mean? Anybody know? Well, pretend you're talking, 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 and, and then we'll see if, if they know what it means. Talk amongst yourselves for a minute. Just talk gibberish. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> oh, they seem to know what it means. What does that mean? It means be quiet. Pay attention, right? You hear that in school, don't you? Or maybe even preschool. Maybe you're out playing in the, in the yard or something, and the teacher comes out and clap, 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 clap. And so you don't, you don't even have to have words. You know right then, oh, i got to pay attention. My teacher needs my attention, or our leader needs our attention. Do you? Great. Well, I think it's... Yeah, we have all, my, all sorts of exciting things at our house to play with. I'm, that's wonderful. So in our reading today from Hebrews, we learn that the way that God gets our attention the best is through Jesus. And God can say to us again and again, I love you, I love you, I love you. But when God gave us Jesus, it gave us something to look at and to believe and to trust. And in Jesus, we see God's love embodied. We see the fullness of God, and we know that love is real. So we give thanks today for the ways that God continually draws our attention to Jesus. For in Jesus, we have life. Let us pray. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus for the ways in which this world may distract us, but how your word continually calls us into a place of promise, that in Jesus we have all things, and that in Jesus is light and life. Help us focus on this good news this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for coming forward today. Please rise for the reading of the gospel. Gospel according to John, the first chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Dear friends in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we find ourselves today in the middle of July, and if you like to think of summer as just three months, June, July, and August, we're pretty much dead center right now. Some people call these the dog days of summer. Now, it may have something to do, I suppose, with the humid or heavier weather we are experiencing with the heat, especially in this last week. But I bring you news that actually the dog days of summer have nothing to do with heat and actually have nothing to do with dogs either. It's actually a reference to something related to the stars. There is a very bright star named Sirius that is visible from Earth, and in the time between July 3rd and August 11th, Sirius aligns with a constellation called Canis Major. And so you think of that word Canis, canine, and so in this season, oftentimes it is called the dog star. So in this season now, we are in the dog star days of summer. Whatever you call them, they certainly do have a bit of a weight to them, or maybe this time of year just allows us to slow down a little bit. Maybe we become a little bit more lethargic because of the weather, or uh, perhaps move a little slower so as not to overheat. Perhaps this is a good season for us then to turn our attention to the book of Hebrews. We've just finished a sermon series on the book of Psalms. Now we move for five weeks into the book of Hebrews. This New Testament book was written for a congregation that had found itself perhaps in the dog days of summer, feeling a little bit lethargic or even apathetic regarding their faith. A once vibrant church filled with enthusiasm for the good news of Jesus had been waning a bit with their enthusiasm, less able or interested in sharing the good news, even not wanting to gather as often for worship. So here comes a letter that we now know as the letter to the Hebrews, or God's people, that helps to build some enthusiasm, reinvigorate or hopefully re-energize a community in the ways in which they have been gifted with this good news. So the letter begins in chapter 1, as we have read for this morning, with an announcement of how this news comes to us, like the dawn of a new day. God is doing a new thing. Something is surfacing up that has never been seen before, like each new sunrise is spectacular in its own way. In fact, God has spoken for generations through ancestors, through prophets, but now in Hebrews we hear this word that God is doing a new thing, for in these days God has spoken through a son. A word continually preached and prophesied, now is embodied in the sun. This picture on the screen is actually taken uh, at Haleakala National Park, which is on an island of Maui in the Hawaiian Islands. It is a beautiful vantage point from which to witness a sunrise. If you have ever had opportunity to travel, you know that the way to this vantage point is precarious. And if you get to this vantage point, you want to get there very early, so you drive in the dark on a windy road, but as a spectacular vision of God's glory in creation once you see it. A couple of years ago, my husband and I had opportunity to travel to Maui, and this was certainly suggested as something that we should see. We are not naturally morning people, so we opted to go to the sunset. That was a little more our speed. So we too took that windy road in the daylight, of course, to that vantage point, and we were not disappointed. Isn't that something that a simple sunrise or a sunset, something that happens every day, 
can still take our breath away, the beauty of God's creation beholding before us. Well, the good news is you don't have to travel all the way to Hawaii for a good sunrise or sunset. You could go to a lake, and you could go to a northern lake and have a view like this one, a view, a view that uh, helps to, next slide, yep, a view that helps to uh, give us a sense again of the splendor and glory of God. One of the great gifts of a sunset or a sunrise on a lake is that reflection on the water, to see those colors dancing in the ripples of the water, to see how the hues take on a different look and how it complements the entirety of the experience. The writer of Hebrews picks up on this visual theme as well, that now, spoken this word through a son, this son is the reflection of everything glorious of the Father. Everything that we see and learn and trust about God the Father is true, truly reflected in the Son himself. Then the writer goes on to say that this Son is the exact imprint of the Father. It's quite likely that the writer was making reference to a coin, perhaps something that people would use daily to pay for different things that they needed. On the coin would be imprinted perhaps an image of a person of authority. That person and just their image would have a, a hold on those who were using that money to purchase something they needed and they were reminded of that powerful person. So then, every time that we see or experience the word in Jesus, we see an imprint of the glory of God, the power of what God has done in Christ. The rest of Hebrews that we read this morning goes on to share what Christ did for us, who has come to make purification for our sin, who has not only done that but completed that with his death and resurrection and now sits among the angels on high where he has a name greater than any other name. And so that good news comes to us in the midst of this day, in the middle of summer, not something new, perhaps. We, we know this word. We know Jesus and his identity, but it, it comes to us as we open our ears to listen again. Some of you have uh, talked with Pastor Jason and I in these past months about how, or excuse me, past weeks, in how it is that you have noticed some changes in the front of our sanctuary, in particular, the changes of new paraments. These green pyramids are a new addition to our sanctuary and newly created just for Bethel. Some of you have noted how beautiful they are and they certainly add a lot to our space. If you are a regular in terms of worship in the Christian tradition, you know that each season of the church year has a specific color. We happen to be in the green season these days and the green season is really just called the ordinary season. The truth is, you're going to see these green pyramids for weeks upon weeks upon weeks. Because the, the season, the ordinary season, happens from after Pentecost and Holy Trinity all the way until Advent, when we change these pyramids to blue. Now, there are a couple of Sundays in there, Reformation and All Saints Sunday, where we change it up a little bit, but it's a lot of green, a lot of ordinary time. We were excited to receive memorial gifts for these new pyramids, and we were also excited to uh, use the opportunity to uh, ask one of the women who had created all of the pyramids for Bethel way back when we built this new sanctuary to also design these as well. She wanted the images on the pyramids to reflect the beautiful window above us that is around the cross, which centers us in worship. So you see that diamond shape then reflected from the window into the pyramids, into the lines that are included on our stoles as well. This season, this ordinary season, is a long stretch but soon we will be into that season of Christmas and we'll say, where did all of those weeks go? And in fact, our gospel reading for today moves us right there. We hear from the gospel of John, the first chapter, in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. We hear that on a Christmas day morning. 
We are illuminated with that good news, a poetic word indeed, not a narrative story of Jesus' birth, but a reminder, just as in Hebrews, that now God has done a new thing. Word has become flesh. God gets our attention in the Christmas story, but all year round by an embodying how it is that Jesus is at work in the world. Sometimes our ears grow dull to that news. Sometimes even in the Christmas season, our ears are so filled and we are so distracted that we forget the central message of God coming to us in a new way, of God speaking a word to us and then becoming that word in Jesus Christ. Radio personality of old um, uh, has had opportunity to share some, uh, Paul Harvey. Paul Harvey, a radio personality of old, has had opportunity over his career to share various stories. If you remember, he used to have a radio news program called The Rest of the Story, where he would tell a story of someone and later you would learn who it was. Well, around the Christmas season, Paul Harvey, in his radio program, loved to tell this story. It was of a family, a family whose tradition had been to go to worship on Christmas Day morning together and then come home and open up their Christmas presents. Not a unique tradition, but something had changed over the years for the father in the family. Over time and because of various things, he had become disheartened, not nearly as engaged in the church life or even in the promises given to him in faith. He grew less and less encouraged by attending worship, and in time, he just didn't go anymore. In fact, his wife and daughters encouraged him, but he, he did not discourage them, but he just didn't feel it, so to speak. And every time he heard that Christmas story, he'd get caught up in a little bit of uh, really, that's so overdone and really God coming as a, a baby and questioning and doubting. Well, on this particular Christmas day, his wife and daughters readied themselves for Christmas morning worship, went to church, and he encouraged them and said, I'll look forward to when you come home and we open presents. He sat down in his recliner, opened his newspaper to read, and then he heard a tapping on the window. Distracted by it, he paused and looked up from his paper, and there was a little bird trying to get into the warmth of the indoors. It was a rather cold Christmas Day morning, and so there was quite a bit of snow and ice, and so this bird was determined. You've had that happen, the bird flying repeatedly in the window. So he put on his coat and his boots, and he trudged out in the snow. He got under that window. There were some bushes that he had to get through, and he tried to reach for tried to help that little bird. Well, the bird wanted nothing to do with him. My goodness, this huge creature reaching out to help him. Why would they ever want that? But he kept trying and became more and more frustrated. And finally, he just hollered out, why won't you let me help you, you, you silly, you silly and stubborn bird? Here I am trying to, to offer you something, to save you, to bring you into a place of warmth and comfort, and you won't let me help you. How can I communicate with you? If only I could, I could be a bird. Right then, the bells tolled at the church just down the road where his wife and daughters were worshiping. At that moment, he sunk to his knees and he said, Oh, Lord, I didn't understand. I understand. I have been stubborn and silly. I have not been listening. Of course you have come for me, to help me, to bring me into a place of comfort and healing and hope. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of Jesus. This is the good news that comes to us on an ordinary July morning. It's not Christmas Day not really any special day in the life of the church year, except that every, every time we come into this sanctuary, we are given a strong and powerful word that you are forgiven, 
that God has come for you in Jesus Christ, and this is yours this day and always. Amen. baptism, our gracious Heavenly Father frees us from sin and death by joining us to the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. We are born children of a fallen humanity, but by water and the Holy Spirit, we are reborn children of God and made members of the church, the body of Christ. Living with Christ and in the communion of the saints, we grow in faith, love, and obedience to the will of God. Matthew and Melissa, called by the Holy Spirit, trusting in the grace and love of God, do you desire to have Michael William baptized into Christ? I do. As you bring Michael William to receive the gift of baptism, you are entrusted with responsibilities to live with him among God's faithful people, to bring him to the word of God and the Holy Supper, to teach him the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments to place in his hands the holy scriptures and nurture him in faith and prayer so that he may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace. Matthew and Melissa, do you promise to help Michael William grow in the Christian faith and life? I do. Sponsors, Tim and Becca and Laura, do you promise to nurture Michael William in the Christian faith as each of you are empowered by God's Spirit and to help him live in the covenant of baptism and in communion with the church. People of God, do you promise to support Michael William and pray for him in his new life in Christ? I ask us together to profess our faith in Christ Jesus, reject sin, and confess the faith of the church. Do you renounce the devil and all the forces that defy God? I, I renounce, renounce them. Him. Do you renounce the powers of this world that rebel against God? I renounce them. Do you renounce the ways of sin that draw you from God? I renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to heaven. On the third day he rose to him. He ascended to heaven. He is the Son of the right hand of God. And he will come to heaven.
Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. You may be seated, and we'll bring Michael over the water right here. Michael William, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that through water and the Holy Spirit, you give your daughters and sons new birth, cleanse them from sin, and raise them to eternal life. Sustain Michael William with the gift of your Holy Spirit, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord, the spirit of joy in your presence, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Michael William, child of God, you've been sealed with the Holy Spirit and marked with the cross of Christ forever. Let your light so shine before others that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let us welcome the newly baptized. We welcome you into the body of Christ and into the mission we share. Join us in giving thanks and praise to God and bearing God's creative and redeeming word to all the world. Well, this is a special morning. A morning may not be a Christmas morning, but to see this little one and all the hope and wonder that he embodies, we have opportunity to see how it is that God could get our attention through the gift of a son. And so this son has been a gift to his family, a gift now to this congregation, and a gift to the world as God blesses him in these holy waters. Let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Help us to quiet, to hear you in the midst of busy lives and a noisy world. Turn off our distractions, both outward and inward, and focus our hearts on your still small voice, Lord, in your mercy. We can hear you in the sounds of creation all around us, bird song and wind blowing and breeze. We hear your voice in the wind that stirs treetops and the water that laps up on the lake shore. Speak your words of grace into each of us and into the waters of baptism that bless Michael William with new life and the gift of the Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy. We lift up all who work in the world of sound, such as musicians, public speakers, sound engineers, broadcasters, auditory therapists, interpreters, and all who can assist the hearing impaired. May the sounds and the word we produce land as praise to the creator of all. Lord, in your mercy. In Christ is life for all, and in the world is healing for our souls. Send your special blessing upon th those whom we lift up today, especially the recent hospitalized, Gary Paulson and Sandy Klein and, and uh, Garrett Ockrey. We pray too for those 
who ask for our, our prayers. And we pray then for Laverne Moe and Emily Porcher. Bless the family of Charlie and Gil Aiken as they welcome a new baby daughter, Haley Grace, Lord in your mercy. Although your prophets suffered the doubt, ridicule, and mistreatment of those to whom they were sent, still they were not deterred from proclaiming your message. May we be so bold as to speak where we know the gospel is needed in our world today. Send a thank you for the saints of light who have shared the good news with us. Comfort Lois Eskelson upon the death of her mother and the family of all of those who grieve with the hope in your promise of the resurrection to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy. Protect the lives of the people affected by the Hurricane Barry. Protect them in this powerful storm and use us where possible to aid in the cleanup as they put their lives back together. Lord, in your mercy. Even in the darkness, your light shines, O Lord. Receive all our prayers as an offering of your trust in the gracious word of life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We'll receive this morning's gifts.
Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Let us pray the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the life, forever and ever. Amen. Live your lives in Christ, rooted and built up in him, and abounding in thanksgiving. And the blessing of the Holy Trinity, one God, be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.